Hey, what's up everybody? Rob Marzullo here, Ramp Studio Comics. Welcome back. So in today's video, I want to show you this uh, artwork of uh, Spider-Man. I got something on my tablet. Yuck. Okay, so <laughs> that's the only bad thing about these screen grabs. You see every little speck of something. Um, so yeah, so essentially I've got this uh, Spidey pick and I wanted to show you some techniques for adding some of these effects. So uh, I've been doing a lot more full-fledged artwork or start to finish artwork inside of the app Procreate using the iPad Pro and um, I just want to show you a couple of the coloring techniques that you might utilize uh, so first off uh, you'll see I got a bunch of layers here so let me get rid of a few of these some are just me testing things and other things get uh, taken right out of the mix or whatever but uh, so like I was going to put in this pattern for the eyes and I ended up going with that pattern little things like that so you can t toggle off these uh, visibility, these layers right here. And oh, we need the line work. There's that right there. Two line work, something like that. And let's just get back to just the line work itself. And I'll show you how I build up on this process. And where's the background effect? Right there. Right there, right there. Okay, almost there. I use a lot of layers, folks. And I even color the line work, so I'm going to have to recolor the line work black probably to show you this properly. So, let's get rid of this one. There we go. So here's the actual line work and the first flood fill. So, the flood fill is basically where I just take, you know, red and I drop it in there. You can either flood fill the background behind the line work and then erase it back. One of the things I like doing in this particular app is just using the selection tool because it's got the best selection tool I've ever used. Actually, let me color that line work black because that doesn't look right until you need it to be um, colored at the very end. So you lock transparency by swiping over and it'll give you that grid pattern. And then just take any brush, minus this short hair brush, and let's go to ink set. Fill it with black and just kind of glance across there and make sure that line works black again. Just like that. And get my signature out of there. Okay, so so the way we start with this, let me just show you. I'll go right back to the beginning. And I start by painting uh, behind the line work. So each new layer I add is going to be behind this line work that I developed and I grab the selection tool here and what's neat about this selection tool is you can draw you can reorient your screen you can click whatever feels the most comfortable you can do this is by far the best selection tool I've ever seen and it's actually why the coloring I feel is um, more than adequate probably uh, a lot more than adequate it's just probably the best um, just because of the selection tool because if you've ever colored uh, in a comic style fashion you know that a big part of generating your, your uh, colors in a cell shading kind of format is your ability to use the selection tool and this one is just amazing so I'll show you how you, know, you can probably get pretty fast at doing this and see I can make these curves with no you know, I'm not struggling to do this it's this pretty easy and if I want to make it easier, I can just zoom in with a two-finger pinch. And you can do the point click. You can also undo and redo. So very, uh, very neat way they designed this uh, selection tool to work. And then just finish it by clicking. So now that's selected. It's behind the line work. I can pick a red. I usually pick something that's kind of a, a reddish burgundy or mid-tone for what I think Spidey's costume looks like. Obviously that's open to debate. And make sure you're on a new layer. Click, hold, and drag, and let go, and it fills that in like magic. And then release your selection by clicking on the arrow a couple times. So there's our flood fill, right? So now the first thing you can do, or the first thing I do, is I do a two-finger swipe over, I lock transparency, I grab an airbrush, and I like to designate just some immediate shadows with a big soft brush. So I do this from a distance. I make the brush real large. And I just kind of get some, uh, I don't know there's a word for this and I can't think of what it is. Ambient? No, not ambient. Um, 
I think it's it's kind of scene lighting. So the overall scene lighting, there's another way to say it, forgive me, but so I just kind of dropped that in to get a, a bit of feeling for the round over of the major shapes before I start doing my cell shading. I always feel that this adds um, a nice effect to it and it's easier to do right now. So I'll work large to small and then I'll just get in some of these other shapes. Now obviously if you do this the wrong way you can hold your finger over the uh, other red, the initial red, and you can brush back as well. And with the smaller brush you can start to cut into this and define uh, a little bit less round over. So when you're when you're painting this way uh, or coloring this way you want to think about the round over. So the highest point of Spidey's head maybe being right here or where the light source might react. You want to th always keep your light source in mind. I'm sure you've heard that a hundred times when watching videos like this. Uh, and this is one of the things you can do. And you also want to picture different round overs. Not everything is rounding over at the same dimension. Some are going to be a more abrupt round over. And that's why cell shading is so neat because it really kind of builds up and then starts to take shape and I'll show you that here in a minute. So there's my basic starting point. Now I could have added this as another layer but again it's pretty easy to select either one of these tones and paint back and forth so I don't feel the need to. But from here on out I will. Now I do recommend adding a layer behind the line work. Um, well at this point we're all behind the line work but add some kind of layer and fill so that you're not working off uh, just a blank white canvas. So in this case just kind of a slate blue with a little white uh, Glow highlight whatever nothing too major, but just drop something in back there It helps you to read your colors a bit more effectively uh, So now let's go ahead and go back to this. We're gonna go on top of the flood fill add a new layer and This is where I think the selection tool is highly powerful. So for instance, I want to start by defining a light source kind of right on the top of the head here and the shape doesn't have to be perfect, but what I like to do is get it, you know, going with the shape of the, the, the dome here on Spidey's Noggin. And as I bring it back, before I connect that, I stop and then I hit fill. The reason why is it's going to kind of connect that for me. And if I go right up to the end of it and I tap it, I'm probably going to get this little hiccup in the, the line. It's not a big deal, but it's just a technique that I use to get the shape a little bit more accurate. Now keep in mind you can add and subtract to selection so you can actually click add here or I guess it's already set to add and you can just go like that and you can kind of you know re-edit uh, this as well so, you know go to invert or subtract or whatever all your options are down here. Uh, this is good enough and I always picture uh, especially if Spidey's in like a, a daylight setting I picture a yellowish golden uh, highlight. You know, you'll see it a lot done a lot of different ways, but this is just one of the ways I like to do it. So I'll pick a soft brush again. I'll bump this up pretty large. Remember that this thumbnail is actually the size that it's going to react to this canvas. And then I'll just kind of paint some of this in. So I kind of think of this in two ways. I get a little bit of this edge that I want, and I get a little bit of the top middle. Okay. So again, lots of different ways to interpret this, but what I want is to start building in some of this edge for cell shading, but I also want to think about the highest point uh, for this to probably read well. So uh, another way to look at this, you can go back, and remember you can go back and edit this pretty quickly and test different things out just by two finger undos, three finger tap redos. Um, so I might say, well, you know, what, what if I just did an AB kind of fade? And AB fade is where it's, this is A, this is B or whatever, and it fades across. Um, and, you know, and test that out, see how it looks. I actually like it better the other way. So let me go back. I'm going to get that gradient fade like that. And then I'm also going to paint more into the middle. That's just the way I kind of see it. So something like that. And what I'm going to do now is actually click on that little end there. Go to Lighten, click Add or Color Dodge or Screen, maybe back to Normal. Uh, you actually like it better at Normal. See now this would be, Color Dodge actually took a lot of the yellow out and made it look like a traditional Spidey kind of highlight there as well. So keep in mind you just want to play around with these and see uh, what you like. You can also bump back the opacity of this effect and test it that way as well. So let's go back to Normal for now. 
So what I'm thinking of is that, you know, he's out in the daylight and this is some of the, the yellow from the sun reacting on the suit. And I'm going to just fill in a couple of these shapes. So I'm picking kind of the highest points of the, uh, the suit. And I'll add a few of these shapes at once or at one time just to save time. Grab that big brush, make it a bit larger, get some of that in there, release the selection. And keep in mind, since this is on a floating layer, I can also use a soft brush and I can erase back parts of it. In fact, I really recommend doing this because you start to really see how it's better to have some edges in focus and some fade off. It just gives us nice kind of subtlety to the work. And you got to remember a lot of times uh, professional work is all about, you know, these subtleties. So let's try a shape for the ear, but it'll be real light here. Just like that. Might even fade that off on the one side. And again, I'm just going to kind of repeat this until I'm ready to add uh, the next color. So I just play around with these shapes. It doesn't mean they're all going to make it to the end result or they're all the right shapes or even the right position of the light source. I uh, do a lot of guesswork here. But that's how I learn experimentation and mistakes. Like they say, fail faster. Make more mistakes, make them faster, and you'll get better quicker. So something like this, maybe a little highlight on the collarbone there. And just kind of brush those in. Yeah, something like that. So little by little. Now the next thing is, is I want to actually shade parts of this as well. So we had, we added that kind of large gradient fade or soft brush fade throughout. But I also want there to be another series of shadows that punches it up even further. So what I'm going to do here, this has been a little bit of our light source, okay? So I'm going to add another layer. And I want to, and remember you can just double click here and name these. Probably not a bad idea. And I want to pick the shadow and then select here. Notice that I just held my finger over that area and wherever I relocate it, it's going to pick up that shadow. And then I'm just going to pick a little bit darker version, something in there. And I'm going to draw out some areas for this. Get a little bit of drop shadow from some of these areas. A shadow on the sternocleidomastoid. And so just picking apart a couple of areas. Now before I go too far, I want to show you kind of what I like to do here. I'm going to set this one to multiply because what it's going to do is even if the areas that are existing are somewhat near this color, it's going to shade those down a little bit further as well. So I want this bit of shading to be a little bit darker to help round out the forms that we see here. So just like that. And again, if I feel like it's too uh, pronounced in certain areas, I can go back with a soft brush, just kind of hit some of those areas, and just slowly work up to it. And you see I actually didn't get that uh, area under the ear very well, but I kind of like that subtle little mark there, but let's just add a little bit more. So, oh, something like that, nothing too pronounced. Uh, also, I think I might want to see one that's off the side of the head, like this. And I'm going to go right through this shape even. And I'm going to need to correct that. Keep in mind too, when doing shapes like this, the main thing is a nice steady pull. Uh, pull, sorry. Uh, that's going to give you a more confident stroke. So try not to stutter step. You know, try to go right through. And picture, uh, picture past where you're trying to go. And I'm actually going to draw through the eye here. I wasn't thinking about it, but we have to fill in the eyes anyways with white. So not a big deal. So something like that. We could do like the bump for the nose. Uh, and actually with the light source coming this way, that would be on the other side, wouldn't it? So try little shapes, you know, something for the brow area, whatever. Make this brush larger.
Okay, and that's definitely too dark there, so let's go ahead and soften that up. And I want to isolate just this area because I've got some other shadows I don't want to erase. So this is really the benefit of working with layers. You can really test and, and adjust things pretty effectively. I actually want to get it away from the highlight to the ear, so I'm actually going to erase a lot of this back. Yeah, and I actually like that. So it's still there, it's very light, but I like this top edge. So sometimes building these shapes in is just a matter of, you know, keep adding to it and, you know, getting rid of certain areas and adding uh, new areas. Uh, so now with areas like the shoulder, we can probably bring this out more. Select here. I'm just trying to round out some of these shapes. Yeah, I like those. And I'd probably get in and do little bits and pieces of the neck as well. So I'll do that really fast. And notice too, I'm just grabbing off the side of each one of these uh, these lines. So those are those are just hints to the shadow, and I'm just kind of extending them with a little bit of tone, like that. Uh, might even add, you know, the, you see there's already kind of a gradient fade there, but I might add a little shadow right here. Doesn't have to be much, just a tiny bit more than it's already there. Little things like that. You see it's starting to round over. So now the other thing I want to do, so I've got my shadow here. We can probably just name those just so we don't get too confused here. Shadows. And we'll call this uh, orange light or color, something like that. And then let's add another one over top. And now what I want to do is really round out the top of uh, Spidey's head. And I want to give a little bit of rim lighting as well. So what I'm going to do is select another spot, kind of keeping in, in mind almost the highest point is what I'm picturing. Something like that. Let's add even a, a little bit brighter uh, light source. I'm going to use yellow, but we'll see if that's uh, the right choice or not. So a little bit brighter light source like that. And we might take this and set this to add or color dots. Let's try add. And remember that we can control the opacity here. Two finger tap on the layer and then pull over to the left because we want this to be a little bit more subtle than it is. So just like that, we're able to get that you know a little bit higher surface there. Uh, let's go ahead and repeat that process and let's go ahead and pick out some higher points in the costume. So something like this. Notice I'm making these a lot smaller because they're supposed to be more uh, you know just stronger light sources, so we don't want to go too large with these. like that and you know there's there's lots of little subtleties that I keep adding as I do this um, I might even want to bring out that ear shape a little bit more so a lot of this is just guesswork and you know playing around with concepts and test something and then back away see if it works that's almost too strong but I, I'll leave it I just want to show you some variation and techniques so as I'm looking at this I'm thinking about a round over that's occurring on muscle groups and forms like this highest points but also just neat little effects. You know, some of it's just style choices. So one of the things I might do is put a little bit of edge lighting right back here. See how this looks? And notice I'm using that line work to trap the uh, effect that I'm going to add. And I'm going to make this a bit stronger. So I'm going to keep hitting that to where it's brighter than the uh, other areas. Release that. And see how that gives it a, a bit more of a dynamic feel. It's doesn't necessarily mean it's entirely correct and this could actually be a, a white even or a different color but uh, but I think this um, kind of matches what we're doing here and then same thing I want to do a little bit of that right here on the top of the head I'll start in the middle so 
I picture the strongest point of this should be in the very center and then blend out to the edges. Again, I can erase back if I feel like that doesn't work. Uh, and I would also recommend that these are different widths. Try not to just repeat this. For one, don't repeat it everywhere around the uh, entire perimeter and make sure they're different widths. So again, thinking of a different amount of round over that occurs with uh, coloring like this. And you can just keep repeating that as necessary. Uh, I'll show you the eyes real quick and then we'll bring this one to a close because I'm sure this is already uh, getting a bit depthy uh, or long. So now with the eyes, we'll just go ahead and create a selection. You know, because it's not spidey until he's got the, the white eyes. Again, love the selection tool. It's just awesome. Grab white there, drag and drop, drag and drop. And with this, I would probably, this is pretty simple, so I'll just swipe over to the right. I'll grab a soft brush. I'll grab a bit of gray, somewhere in there. And I'll just go ahead and try to round these out. So I'll keep adjusting this soft brush and uh, you know, picture where I want the highlight. So I'm kind of picturing that it's rounding over and the light source is right there. And you can really do this a number of ways. Obviously you could say that the light's back here, but you know, we see from where we've added the light on the head, the light's kind of coming down. So really the light source would probably be more on the front of the eyes, but I like to make it look rounded over. So I'm gonna put a bit of shadow on both sides. It just looks a bit cooler, I think. So you can see I totally disregard some, uh, some evident rules or whatever um, for the sake of coolness. Okay, so there's that, and then uh, I think I did a grid pattern. Now this was actually just a custom brush, or I shouldn't even say a custom brush, I think it came preloaded in Procreate, which is awesome. Uh, so I'll just show you how to do that. You could draw these patterns in, uh, and then you can blend them into the eye area, but I'll show you the exact way I did it. So I'll add another layer over top. I'll select, uh, I believe it's, where are you? Textures. Yeah, right there. So I actually went with either the half tone or the uh, grid pattern. So let's do the grid pattern, set that to white. And let's go ahead and brush that across here. So you can adjust the size of the gr uh, grid pattern. I can't talk today with this. And then you can brush it across there like that. And I want to get this, you got to hold the brush down as you draw through this. And I'm actually going to bring that up higher. And I'm going to rotate that. So I'm going to click once. I'm going to rotate. I just think it looks a bit cooler like diamonds. You can also distort these a bit as well so they don't look too repetitive or too straight up and down or diagonal or whatever. Just kind of adjust them. And then you can erase them back or use your selection tool. I'll just take the erase tool set to an inking pen. And just, oh, that was a little too much. Just erase these back. that and you could even have done this a bit more uh, efficiently and actually use the black of the eyes as a selection so you could have took the magic wand selected there inverted it deleted with a three finger swipe lots of ways to skin the proverbial cat so there's that, and then we can set this to a blending mode of something like add. So it kind of punches it up even brighter than the brightest part. Um, you know, lots of ways you can kind of mess with that. I think screen looks better, because I'm actually going to bump back the opacity. And then I'll just erase some of this back. But before I do that, I'm actually going to do a three finger swipe, copy and paste, flip horizontal, bring that over here, kind of rotate into place. Erase again. Always pay attention that you don't leave any artifacts when doing this kind of effect. It's real easy to kind of miss that. Alright, so I'm going to take those two, pinch them together, and there we've got the eyes. 
I'm going to go ahead and use a soft brush for erasing, so airbrushing. And what I'll do is probably erase to the shadow side. I would test each way, so just, you know, kind of play with this and see what you like most. But the main thing is that it's not just so evident everywhere. It usually has a nicer effect when, again, you're thinking of subtleties. You want to get little bits of it in, in uh, plain sight and other areas faded out. And that subtlety usually creates a nice effect. Now finally, to kind of conclude this, I'll go ahead and show you the effect for the line work. Uh, one of the things I would do, I actually don't like the drawing portion I did right there. It was just kind of a reference for that uh, pattern that I wanted to create. So I'll erase that with the three finger swipe after selecting it. And then uh, what I'll do now is just paint back some of the line work. So the neat thing about this is when you generate your line work on a separate layer, you can swipe over like that and lock transparency. You can select from the existing color palette by holding your finger over top. Select something like a uh, soft brush. And I'll generally start with the higher point like this. And I'll just paint back that line work a little bit. And I'll do that on the, the suit, especially on the uh, lines. It seems to soften that up. So again, these lines aren't just like in your face on the whole design. Uh, and you can mix this up. You can paint some of it back. Really, I would stay to the darker red because you don't want to go too light. But you can use this as another way to throw in a light source on the very edge of the character. See that? So lots of neat little effects there. You know, and we can just keep going on and on. You can see that this is a bit different than the original one I showed you. But hopefully that gives you some ideas on how you can color your superhero art. Uh, inside of Procreate, an amazing app. Fantastic for drawing, inking, and coloring your work on the go. Uh, I, I use this more and more all the time. Uh, keep in mind, I do have a course on Procreate, so if you're interested in that, there'll be a link in the description box below. I have other courses and online products, and I have custom brushes, some of which are for free on my Gumroad. So I'll make sure all that's linked below. I really appreciate you tuning in and watching today. As always, keep drawing, keep having fun, and I will talk to you soon.